Job chapter 46. If you go ahead and stand with me. Verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Y'all go ahead and be seated. We pray. Dear Lord, I pray that it would be a humbling over our spirits. Dear Lord, give us ears to hear the words that are being spoken. Dear Lord, let us reside in your presence. That way all things spoken can resonate with each and every one of us in a manner that it should. Dear Lord, help us to take what we learn in our hearts and our minds and apply them to our lives. Dear Lord, thank you so much. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read the whole chapter to you. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength. The very present help in trouble. You know, I don't believe we all believe that. We know what it says, but do we really believe it? Let me start over. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. When I say we, I mean exactly just that, we. Because it's easy to talk big until you're under pressure. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Amen. Therefore, we will not we fear though the earth be moved and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled. Though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Salah. There is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. The holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. Plural tabernacles. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her and that right early. Amen. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved, he uttered his voice, the earth melted. Amen. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge, so on. Amen. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he has made in the earth. Right. He makes wars to cease unto the ends of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder, he burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Amen. Amen. I'm going to be honest. This morning I had no plans on going this route. It was not until the last minute. And this car here is where the Lord began to speak. Not just reading it. The presence of God came all over me. And I begin to cry like a baby, and I'm thinking, I know what you're saying. And you're speaking it to me. But I know as you speak it to me for my life that you want to speak it to other people's lives too. So I'm coming here this morning with nothing prepared now because God's thrown me a curveball. But I know that it's exactly the route that the Lord wants to go. I know it for sure. If you look around the world we're living in right now, you're going to see all kinds of things that are changing. You're going to see a lot of things going on. There's wars, there's rumors of, rumors of wars, there's civil unrest, there's problems, there's upheaval, there's global instability. Your, your economy, even in your own nation, is collapsing and it will further collapse. There's weather phenomena. there's all kinds of things that are happening right now. The Bible says Jesus prophesied, I believe it was in the 24th chapter of Matthew, he said even the love of many would wax cold in that hour. And I stood and examined myself yesterday and I said, God, it's true about other people, but if I can get down to the nuts and bolts about it, it's true about me. And if we're not watching and we're not still in the Lord and we're going to examine what that looks like, then it's possible we too come under the pressure that the world comes under. That we too feel the weight of the things that don't belong to us as the church. And I'm going to tell you when God spoke to me back there in that hallway this morning, I knew that he was wanting to speak to some people this day. So if you would listen very closely. Right now in the hour that we're living in, there's biblical morality being challenged and everything that we knew to be true and know to be true about the scriptures and about who God is has been challenged by the world and by the people and by much of the church. 
And our personal lives, we're facing things with like job insecurity, family issues, problems, relational issues, financial issues, you name it, sickness and disease and attacks, and it's just too much for any one person to bear in and of themselves. You know that we're going through some things. Things are happening in people's lives right now that are beyond measure. So in the midst of all of that, it would seem that we would find ourselves very often times wringing our hands. Trying to figure out what it is that we can do about the situation. Trying to assess the problem and determine how it is that we can fix the problem. And determine how it is that we can step up to the plate and go to the back in a way that is good enough to bring our problems to an end. And I'm going to tell you right now that the enemy, does he absolutely wants the church to be in that position thinking that you can go to bat for yourself, that you can figure it out for yourself, that you can fight it and war it out on your own accord, of your own accord. And when these weights and these burdens come against you, that surely you're strong enough to bear everything you need to bear and carry everything you need to carry with the help of no other. You brought, you claim Jesus. You believe in Jesus. You love Jesus. You worship Jesus. But when it comes down to the nitty gritty, when it comes down to the wire, tell me if it is that you've learned to be still and know that he's God. Tell me if not, you haven't tried to rise to the occasion and do what only God can do and help God as if he needs your help and step up to the plate as if Jesus, I've got this, I know I trust you, but then you failed. Especially if you're a man. You can't look weak in front of your family, can you? You can't look dependent upon another entity in front of your family, can you? When four bills hit the table and you got enough to pay three, what are you going to do? How many times have you found yourself in a position like that trying to make it work? You definitely don't want to be still. Working hard to fix people or to fix situations. Or to beat the enemy in your own strength. So uncertainty and fear slithers in. And it's like one who pierces your heart and your mind. And it sometimes drains your peace. It drains your confidence. We'll look at the text again. I'll tell you God spoke to me first about me. Okay? Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. How many times you heard this preached? Countless hundreds of times, probably. It's a message we've probably heard without context and with context. It's a message we've heard in every way, shape, and form, I'm sure. But to be honest, it's a text that's never really gotten my attention as much as it should have. But certainly the Lord spoke it to me today, and I know it got my attention then. Within the context of the Hebrew for be still, and if you're curious, yes, I have pulled some old notes to make this happen. That's why I keep them. The context of the word be still in the Hebrew is the word that I believe God is wanting to speak to us this morning in a real, real way and cause us to understand in a way that will bring forth change in our lives. There's people in here that's got too much pressure on them and the reason that you've got too much pressure on them is because I believe you've missed one key component to what it looks like to trust the Lord. You know, it's funny because over the last few days, God's been speaking to me to get into a place of prayer. The Bible says in Psalm 65 that silence is praise. Amen. To get in your presence, to get in his presence, to sit there, to fix my mind on it, and just to be still. 
Don't have so much to say this time. Don't come to me with everything you think I need to hear. Have a Take some time to sit in my presence and let me minister to you. Know that I am God. Have a seat in my presence and be actual still. Have a stillness about your soul, a stillness about your heart. Don't come to me with the 1,200,000 problems you got in your life this time. Just come and have a seat. I know the ends of your heart from beginning to end. I know what you're going through. I know what you're facing. And you can voice those to me in due time. But right now, the cause, the way are raging and the storms are raging how about you come pull up a seat in my presence keep your mouth shut and your mind shut don't be thinking all the things you need to be thinking and you think you need to be thinking and get in my presence and be still Amen. still yourself I know a lot of people are thinking it's just limited to sitting and being quiet and doing nothing. I want to tell you that's not entirely the context of the word. The word be still in the Hebrew means to slacken. It means to slacken. It was an admonition that was given to people that were facing battles and in the midst of warfare. It means to slacken and or to let loose. It means to, to, to not feel as if you're going to have to iron this out. It's a wartime word. Be still in the middle of turmoil. Loosen up. Lighten up in the middle of turmoil, in the middle of war, in the middle of problems, in the middle of issues. Take your hands off and relax for a minute. God is saying to you through the text alone, I am your refuge. I am your strength. I'm a very present help in a time of trouble. The prescription that God gives is not for you to measure up or to step up. It's to step down and desist. It's to back off and say, you are God. I recognize that this is too much for me to figure out or to compute in my mind or to iron out on my own. I can't figure it. Then be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted among the nations. I break the bow. I bring it into wars. I bring it into these things. Trust me and I will work it out. Be still. Does anybody hear me? You know as good as I do, when you feel the pressure, you try to compensate. You try to pick up the slack. You try to figure how you can add to the equation in order to prevent it from becoming a bigger problem and to reverse the things that are happening. And it's funny because God doesn't say to do any of that. He doesn't say, I want you to figure out how to break the bow. I want you to figure out how to cause the, the sea to stop raging. I, want you, I don't want you to figure out how to cut down the spear or to break off the chariot and fire. He didn't say, I want you to figure any of that out. He said, I want you to lighten up and be still in my presence and sit back and watch as you find peace in me and you rest in me and you're still in me and you're not shaking my circumstance in me. Watch how when I can see that you trust me and you're leaning on me for everything, watch how I rise to the occasion and begin to break off these things that have been troubling you and begin to dismantle these problems in your life. Watch how when you find rest in me, not just with your words, not just with your theology, but in your mind, when you find rest in me, you will be in perfect peace. When that's the case and you're still, I will move. Right now, I believe that you've got some turmoil in your life and some fights and some wars that some of you are facing. Because you've tried to figure out how to face them. And you've tried to figure out how to do something with it. And i, I got a hunch that God is standing back watching some of your lives. Never leaving you. Never forsaking you. But watching and waiting. When will they figure out that they can't do anything about that wave? And they can't do anything about that war? And they can't do anything about that spear? I'm with them. And I'm not going to leave them or forsake them. But the moment they calm down and look up to me and rest in me and be still and stop trying. Be still is an idea that says stop struggling, stop fighting in the way that you're trying to fight. Try, stop trying to figure this out on your own. I'm going to tell you, even when it's not, there's not a war, there's not a wave, there's not a battle, you need to figure out how to be still and get in the presence of the Lord and know that He's God and rest in Him. 
Too many bills? Be still. Family's crazy? Be still. Drug problems? Be still. Even when you're high, go to the presence of the Lord and say, I'm sorry, but I trust you. You are God, and you're going to help me with this. I know it. I'm not going to try to figure out how to beat this. Twelve steps will never do it. Amen. But that step will. And it's funny how we carry that thing around everywhere we go. We let it pin us to the ground and weigh us down. We try to deal with burdens and problems of our own and try to figure it out in the name of Jesus. We claim him and we claim his power. We claim his name. We claim his refuge. We claim him and everything. And yet most of us are not allowing the workings of who he is and what he does to work through us. And the answer all day long at the end of the day is simple. That you find yourself in the midst of turmoil. And you find yourself with problems and issues all about. From every angle there's things going on in your life. And a lot of it is way too much to want to deal with. You go to sleep and hope you wake up tomorrow everything's changed. And I'm telling you it's not going to change. Until you rest in the one that has the ability to change it. Until you find rest in the one that can take away the issue and the problem. You're going to continue to see the issue and the problem. While Jesus walks alongside of you and allows it to happen because he knows it's for your own good because the very moment you trust in the one who you're called to be still in you won't find his help how many of y'all's got problems in your life Amen. I've got kids going to hell right now I've got way too much work Way too many issues with my own families and, my, and people around me. I've got struggles of my own, of weaknesses that are developing through trying to carry my own weight and to carry my own problems and to carry my own issues and then carry everybody else's too. Be still, son. The very moment I heard the Spirit of the Lord speak that to me, I knew that God was not saying this. Don't carry everybody's burdens. You're called to bear one another's burdens. He wasn't saying, don't stop doing what you're doing. Don't keep helping people and pressing on. Keep providing for your family. Go to work. Keep trying to build the business because I will bless it. He's not telling me not to do those things. He's telling me, I want you to come. I want you to be still. And that raging mind of yours, the fears, the concerns, the, the burdens. I'm going to tell you something. How do you know that this is a reality in your life? Because you're exhausted. You're exhausted because it's flesh work. That's right. Be still and know that I am God. I have a refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Even if the earth is moved and the mountains are carried into the midst of the sea, which watch, it's literally fixing to happen. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Salah. There is a river. There is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy places of the tabernacles of the Most High. The river is the answer. Where is the river? In the presence of the Lord, where he's called you to be still. How many of y'all have literally gone into the presence of the Lord, sprawled out on the couch or something, shut your mouth and shut your mind? Raise your hands and say, Jesus, I love you. I receive you. Your mind is fixed on him. You're thinking about him. And he's filling you with that river. That river is going to give you strength. It's quickening strength. That will cause you to be able to endure while you're carrying things and going through things. You cannot do it without the river. You ever heard the song, the Gaither song, There is a river? And it flows from deep where? Within. Out of your belly shall flow what? Rivers of living water. Just the Holy Ghost. Repent ye therefore, as a change of mind. Your mind, your mind is the problem. Be converted, that your sins will be blotted out, and then times of refreshing will come in the presence of the Lord, the river. God isn't negating your problems. He's not get, negating your family issues or the things that you're going through or your financial troubles or the warrings and the fightings and the problems that you're facing and the issues. And that don't matter how long they've li how long they've gone on. That's not the problem. I challenge you because I know that there's some people in this house that need to, other than myself, that need to learn to be still and know that He's God.
Like the word know, be still and know. Have a knowledge that I have God, have an awareness. That is not something that happens in a mind that's under constant warfare and fire all the time. I shall keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. And I promise you, man, your problems don't go away just because you sit quiet in the presence of the Lord. But when you get quiet in the presence of the Lord and you sit still in his presence and you let loose and you slacken like the word means, you say, God, I'm here not to bring you all my grief and all my problems this time. I'm here to bring you me. And I know you love me and I know you see all of this. I've come, God, just me and you. And as I'm still in your presence and I soak in your presence and just receive that river flowing, that still river, what kind of waters does he lead you beside? Why? Because we in the flesh have a tendency to be everything but still. I, in the flesh, have a tendency to be everything but still. Even while I'm saying I'm thinking about my dirty. My mind is in a million places. I can't deal with that problem today. I can't have that issue today. I can't bear that today. What do we typically do? We either avoid the issue, we avoid the problem, we stress out about it, or we try to tackle it head on like we're, we're tough and we can figure it out, and it's never worked. And God is saying, take a minute. Be still. Get in my presence and let loose and be still. What happened when they were on the boat and the storms were raging? You remember Jesus who took a long, hard nap at the floorboard of a boat when it was storming? He was still. Why? Because he knew no matter what waters would swallow him, what waves would swallow him, what whales would swallow him, it didn't make any difference. He knew in whom he trusted. He knew who his refuge and his strength was. He was still. And this isn't just a stillness in body in a moment of time when we sit down and get in the presence of the Lord. It's not just a moment in which we're actually physically still, which it does involve that. This stillness in which we go into the presence of the Lord and we soak in his presence and let him do a work without discussing the million problems we got in our life in that moment. That stillness through that river begins to nourish and revive. And then when we go from that place, because we can't stay there forever, we go back to life and the same issues are there. We have a stillness in our mind. In the very place where the enemy is able to manipulate our problems and to bring forth so many burdens that it weighs us down and nearly kills us. I don't know if you're hearing me or just pretending to not understand. But I'm going to tell you this. I know I'm not the only one. That life has its way about waging a war against you. It's got its way about throwing a spirit at your face or bringing forth a chariot that needs burning with the fire. It's got a way of stirring something in your life unwelcomed. And the answer is not you figuring out how to dismantle the works of this raging storm or this war. The answer is you going into the presence of the Lord, trusting that he loves you, trusting that he's God, trusting that he's not forgotten you, trusting that he's still above every circumstance, and then getting into his presence and being still. You know what this says to me? Because I knew when the Lord spoke to me that he wanted to speak to others. It says to me there's some people here going through some things. And it also says to me that he cares for you to figure out how to get it dealt with. Amen. There's people in this house this morning that need to learn to desist and be still. And you've taken matters into your hands long enough and it's exhausted you. You've asked God for help. In fact, you've pleaded with God for help with your battles time and time again. And in the meantime, you've waited on God to move rather than be still. And you're making moves as a precautionary measure as if you can tie up loose ends until it is that God does move. Does anybody hear what I'm saying right now? You know it's true. I'm going to try to, I'm going to, try to tie up loose ends until I see God move on the thing I've asked him to. While God, in the meantime, is like quit with the loose ends and be still. Quit with the loose ends and be still. Quit trying to figure it all out and be still. I've got it figured out. I ordained this hard bondage which you were made to serve. For the very purpose of you learning how to be still in my presence. It's all over the book. Amen. 
New age, heretical, twisted new covenant scripture would say God would never do that. I'm telling you, this book says otherwise. Amen. He has allowed certain things in your life for the purpose of you learning to turn to him and be still and trust in that moment that he's actually going to move. It's one thing to say we trust. It's one thing to say we believe. It's one thing to say, say, say all that we can say, but then we prove by our actions or lack thereof that we don't actually believe and we don't actually trust. Because if we did, we would not try to get ahead of the Lord and do things codependent of Him, independent of Him, when we're called to be codependent upon Him. Do you understand? I know it works because I've been there. And I know it's necessary because right now God is calling me to be still. In regards to things in my own life, my own kids, my own family, my own self, my own work, my own money, my own issues, my own whatever. Be still, son, is what he said. I picked up the cart and immediately, be still, son. I think I guess we get the mindset that if we're still, that's time wasted. Things will get too far gone, too far ahead of us. We need to keep pace with them so that we make sure nothing gets out of hand. Does it really matter how far gone it gets? Is he not the master of taking ruinous situations? Yes. No matter how far gone they are. Yes. How far gone were you? Let me tell you how far gone I was. And it wasn't no amount of mama or granny or anybody else that tried to chase me down and tie up my loose ends. That was the answer. The answer was the moment that somebody who would believe upon the one whom God has sent would learn to be still in his presence and say, I trust that you are God. And I know you're going to dismantle these works that the enemy has sown into my son's life. There's no 90 felonies that's going to stop my God. There's no crack, heroin, meth, peel, or addiction that's going to stop my God. There's nothing in the very moment that the believer of the Lord Jesus Christ said, I'm going to rest in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to let my silence be praised. And I'm going to be still and know that he is God. I don't know who did it, but I'm going to guarantee you this. My salvation, apart from being called and chosen, was partly because somebody out there said enough was enough and I can't do it. I'm going to learn to be still in the presence of the Lord and I'm going to watch him do what only he can do. There's too many occasions in your own life and in my own life in which we're able to do good things, but good things are not always enough. There's times in which you know you're in way over your head and you try to swim your way back to the top and figure out what you're going to do about this child or that child or this job or that deal or whatever else. And you keep going back. You get your head above water and it goes back down. You get your head above water and it goes back down. You get your head above water and you're like, God, I can't breathe. I can't get above the water long enough to make any progress. And God said, be still, son. Catch a breath before I get shoved back under with my burdens, everybody else's burdens, and nothing that I have the capacity to fix. Only the capacity to pacify. I'm a good pacifier. I can help you pacify your problems, but I can't fix them. But I can tell you who can. Amen. When you learn to be still in the presence of the one that formed you in your mother's womb, when you learn to be still in the presence of the one who fearfully and Is he? How? How do we tap in to that strength? There's a fine line between new age and actual good spiritual Christianity. 
There really is. Because the church we've heard of in America is so religious, there is no spirituality in it. It's almost dead. If, I, if anybody else would have told you, other than the book, to sit quietly in the presence of the Lord, keep your mouth shut. And unto him, that is praise. Would you have believed it? I'm telling you, man. Stress with the economy collapsing. Be still, son. But God, peace. I almost feel like he's helping me now. this. A pastor has way more reasons than most people to not be still. All it takes is one person you love to look out and see I'm not here for your mind to go a million places. It don't take much. All it takes is one phone call of somebody you love in distress and you know that oh, I can't fix it. All I can do is lean in here. We don't need to be still. And you know, the funny thing is, is as I'm still, and that river begins to refresh me, and a stillness becomes the reality of my soul and my mind, yeah. I'm able to help you more while it is that God is looking to help you. I, I would say we could cut short a lot of the troubles we have if we would learn this one thing. Be still and know that I am God. Do you read the whole chapter? I just want to get up yet. 46. Read it in the round. God is our refuge and strength, a very pleasant or very present self in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, Though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, so long. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. Amen. The holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. Amen. God shall help her and that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Shalom. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow. And cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. And the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Amen. So I, you play a song. I don't feel the need to go any further. I do feel the need, however, to get the presence of the Lord and maybe practice what I preach. When sickness comes to your house, are you still? I know I'm not when it's dealing with a one-year-old child and they can't really tell you what the problem is and it's hard to be still. 
When the financial pressure tries your faith, are you still? When a relationship goes sour and offense presents itself, are you still? How about when temptation comes and you don't know what to do with it, you feel like you're outnumbered, are you still? Be still and know that I am God. That's it. Father, I don't know what else to say. But I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your great grace. I pray, God, that we could be a people of application. That we quit with all the mechanics of what we think is right, what seems right. And just come and get your presence and be still. God, I know that as we settle our minds in the stillness of the Lord, that we're able to hear more clearly your voice. Who knows best? You're the one who knows best. And I just pray, God, this morning that you'll do a work in everybody here. I know, God, there's a number of people that need help. And I just thank you, God, for your great grace. We trust you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.